the family in Islam. The family is at the core of Islam, and religious laws are aimed at maintaining and strengthening family relations. Founded more than 1400 years ago, Islam brought a message of peace and goodwill to all mankind, based upon human rights and civil liberties, as it is understood across all religions today. The Quran is Islam's equivalent of the Bible or Torah. The Quran, as well as the teachings of Prophet Muhammad, calls for mutual respect and love between parents and their children. Muslim parents are held accountable before Allah or God for the way they raise their children. In return, Muslim children are expected to respect their parents, listen to their opinions, never raise their voices in front of them, and take great care of them as they grow older. Homes for the elderly are very rare in Muslim societies. The responsibility of aging parents and grandparents is shared by the children. Rana Atani is the oldest of four and lives at home with her parents. She is not restricted to the house and has many friends she socializes with. Well, the only time that I may think of leaving the house is when I get married. So I just move to my husband's uh, home. Islam stresses the, uh, the strong relation between the, uh, between the family, between the parents and the children. Uh, moreover, it obliges us to treat our parents in a very nice way, in a very um, respective way. We should respect them all over the road. We should, uh, we should be able to, to give them whatever they want. And as in return, they should also treat us in a very good way and give us uh, all what we need. So Islam um, puts the rules on how we should treat our parents and how they should treat us. The Atanis are a typical Muslim family, living as much as possible in accordance with the teachings of Islam. Their lifestyle as a family is focused on helping one another and accordingly pleasing Allah. Mona is the mother and besides her tasks at home, she works at the university. Islam does not oblige her to contribute any of her earnings to the household. That is her choice. Concerning women, Islam does not forbid women from working. Uh, I think a Muslim woman should have many characteristics that uh, reflect the principles of Islam. Uh, a Muslim woman should be veiled in the first place. Uh, she should be educated, she should be active, uh, just uh, having, having from the inside that she wants to help the society, she wants to help anyone, uh, no harm, no insult, uh, nothing bad should be done for others. She should also be pious, uh, modest, caring, loving for his children, uh, loving for her family, energetic. She can be educated, of course, as I said before, because uh, this reflects her education and her personality is reflected to her children, which are the future generation. So Islam doesn't prevent me or any Muslim woman from doing anything she wants, but of course within uh, ethical boundaries and within the principles that Islam wants. For example, I was educated in an American university and I've got an engineering uh, degree. I also work in an engineering company. Despite her full schedule, Rana also finds time for her friends and religious commitments. Every Wednesday evening, Rana, her sisters and their friends meet for a halakha at a private center in Beirut. A halakha is a religious gathering. The Sheikh leading the gathering this evening is a graduate in religious studies from the famous Azhar University in Cairo. Marwan, the father, is responsible for supporting the family financially. He owns a small textile shop downtown, which he says serves the needs of his family. Every Friday, he attends prayers at his local mosque. Both Mona and Marwan have taught their children the ways and teachings of the Quran and the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. The family prays together as often as they can. Education is compulsory for both men and women, 
in religious as well as scientific and social studies. Not only to advance a personal professional career, but also to know and understand one's religious rights and duties, which helps in making everyday decisions. Of course, if we go to the, uh, to the literature of the, of, the, of the Prophet, peace be upon him, we could find it in one phrase that says, knowledge is a duty upon every Muslim. Of course, when we say every Muslim, mean also mean male and female. And that's amazing in that time, in the first, at the very beginning of the seventh century. That was something amazing. It was like a revolution to ask people to seek knowledge wherever they are. As stated in the Holy Quran, O mankind, we have created you from a male and a female and made you into nations and tribes that you may know one another. Yet the images we see in the media, in films and on the news create quite a different impression. Images of helpless veiled women forced to stay at home and bearded men trailed by strings of wives. Like any society, those images are not always wrong. But what is wrong is to only portray Muslims behaving in un-Islamic ways. Following a simple day in the life of the Itani family represents just another day in the lives of many Muslim families, not only in the Arab world, but all over the planet.